name's Melinda Erickson and I'm a paediatric OT. I know that social isolation is going to be incredibly difficult for children who have sensory processing disorders. So I've developed a series of sensory regulation strategies so families can incorporate them easily within their daily routine using items found commonly within most homes. The first in the series contains proprioceptive activities which help to calm and organize the brain and body. Proprioception tells us the position of our body in space. It allows us to move fluidly within our environment. Children who crash and bang, who chew on non-food items and who hold toys so hard that they break them usually have proprioceptive difficulties. This proprioceptive dysfunction also impacts on postural control, balance and coordination. Socially, children who struggle with proprioception may hurt their peers or their siblings because they don't know how much force to use when they're playing. Poor proprioception makes children feel anxious, disorganised and it impacts on their self-esteem. Here are a few activities that you can easily do at home to provide calming and organising proprioceptive feedback. It is best to use these activities throughout the day to avoid dysregulation. The effects last about two hours, but every child is unique. Talk to your child about how they feel when they're engaged in the activities. If you do see them seeking proprioceptive input, suggest one of their preferred activities and help them understand how and when they should use them. These are all great ideas, but all children have different sensory profiles. Rolling your child up in a carpet or a duvet or something similar is great for providing deep proprioceptive inputs throughout the whole body. Ask the child to roll as much as possible themselves. At the end, they can stay in the rug and keep having that input all throughout their body or they can roll themselves back out. Some children won't like their head inside the carpet. Others will love to be tucked deep inside. Changing carpet rolling into a game like making a pizza or making the child into a hot dog keeps it fun and interesting for both of you. They could also be a road and you drive cars or trucks over them, but the whole aim is to get the proprioceptive input throughout the whole body, especially around the joints. Many children who struggle to process proprioceptive information accidentally hurt their siblings when they're playing because they have a lot of trouble understanding how much force to use. Children who are proprioceptive seekers love games where their siblings sit on their back and provide that deep proprioceptive input they're craving. This also helps to strengthen the sibling bonds in a game that everyone can enjoy. It's really important during proprioceptive activities for the child to do as much of the work as possible. Hold an old scarf, a tablecloth or a wrap and let the child pull themselves up. This also helps to develop bilateral skills, upper body and hand strength, and coordination. Animal walks are an easy activity to do with children of all ages. We often do these on the way to bed or as we move down the hallway from one room to another. There are many variations. Here are just a few. Bear walks, donkey kicks, frog jumps, and bunny hops. Try to make sure that the hands and feet are always flat on the ground, as well as sending proprioceptive feedback. Animal walks also help to develop upper body strength, hand strength, coordination and sequencing skills. Wall push-ups are a great activity for the older children. Teaching your child to control their breathing is a lifelong tool for independent self-regulation. Deep breathing calms and centers the mind, improves body awareness, and balances your child for learning and engaging in tasks. It's important the child learns to breathe deep into their belly and not to hold their breath in their chest. Games such as blowing through straws into water, bubbles or paint are all fun breath regulation games. During this activity, I tell the children to pretend that they're a mummy bird, protecting their babies from an eagle swooping down. The child can sit in a beanbag or on a sofa. 
If they've got good core strength, they could sit on the floor and prop themselves up. They need to try and kick the ball away with the soles of their feet. Not only is this great proprioceptive feedback, it is also good for strengthening the trunk muscles and developing good timing and sequencing when the feet try to connect with the ball. In the clinic, we'd use a scooter board for linear or horizontal vestibular activities while incorporating proprioceptive activities. These are calming and organizing for the child, but a skateboard will work just as well. Have the child push off surfaces for that proprioceptive feedback. A skateboard is actually really hard to balance on during these activities, so this might be one for the older children with a little bit more balance.